the key consideration that you should have as you progress through this series is this. How do you make use of the knowledge that you have learned? And in order to support this kind of an objective, we have constructed a network and we're going to do some troubleshooting. So here we have the network and we are told that PC1 cannot communicate with PC2. We're also given some details about the network. We know it's a wired network. We know the IP addresses of both machines. And we also know the MAC addresses of both machines. And it's up to us to diagnose what is going wrong and to resolve the issue so that the machines are able to communicate with each other. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to go to the machine or a machine, and I'm going to try and communicate with the other machine. So I'm going to PC1. I'm going to go to the desktop. And as I navigate to the desktop, an error comes up. It says that the device must be powered on. Now, this is something that we have to bear in mind. All the devices that are going to communicate with each other must be powered. So sometimes you might go into an organization and you're told that there is some sort of connectivity issue. And one of the things that you want to look at first and foremost is, are the device powered? And sometimes a device can be so-called plugged in, but it's not really plugged in. It might not be plugged in properly enough so that the connection is being made securely. So the device is actually not powered. And that can create the connectivity issue. Now, we are in our simulation tool, Packet Tracer. And I'm going to now show you how do we turn on these devices. So if we go to the physical tab or the physical view, and we look at the image that represents the machine, there's this little button here that you can click on. And as I clicked it, you realize that it becomes green. And usually within organizations or within these devices, you will have some sort of light that will indicate whether or not there is some activity on the device. So please pay special attention to that. So I've turned on PC1, and I also want to ensure that PC2 is turned on as well. So I'm going to PC2, and it's also off. I'm going to turn it on as well. So I'm now sure that both devices are powered. And because both devices are now powered, I can now start to do my analysis. In the previous video, we would have understood that we can use the ping command to try and establish communication between the devices. So I'm going to go to PC1, going back to the desktop, and I'm going to launch the command prompt. Now at the command prompt, I'm going to try and ping PC2. So I need to know what the IP address of PC2 is. And based on the diagram, it is 192.168.10.2. So I'm going to ping that. So I'm pinging 192.168.10.2. And as I ping the device, I realize that the request has timed out. So that's telling me that there is some connectivity issue. What I'm not sure about is where the connectivity issue actually exists. So at a first glance, I'm going to try and have a look at the IP addresses just to ensure that the IP addresses that I'm trying to communicate with are actually accurate. So the diagram tells me that the IP address of PC2 is 192.168.10.2. 
And I'm going to go on to PC2 to confirm that for myself. So I'm on PC2, go to the desktop, go to the command prompt, and the command that I'm going to execute is IP config. So I do IP config. I'm looking for the IP address of the machine and remember that is found under the IPv4 section. And lo and behold, it is telling me that the IP address is 192.168.10.3. So I'm going to go back. I now realize that there is some error in terms of the information that I have been given. So I'm now going to go back and try to ping PC2 from PC1. So let me make a change to the network diagram. So that we now have the correct IP address. And let's go back to PC1. And let's re-execute the command, but change the parameters. So it's 192.168.10.3. And we ping. And once again, we are seeing that the request has timed out. So we are now sure that the IP address is correct. So there is something else that is at play in terms of why we are not able to communicate with, with the devices. In, a, in, in our next session, our future sessions, we are going to be looking at the OSI model, which is a model that provides us with a set of steps or layers that we can use as a means of troubleshooting where issues are occurring within the network. So please look out for that because that is going to be very important and it will assist you greatly in terms of diagnosing what is happening. Based on my experience, having checked the IP addresses and ensuring that the IP addresses for each device is correct. Then the next thing that I would want to do in a peer-to-peer -peer network is to see if the physical connection is okay. Because sometimes you can plug in the, the cables, but they are not plugged in properly. And once again, if they are not plugged in properly, just like how if you don't plug in the machine properly into the electrical conduit, if the cables are not plugged in properly, then it means that the connection is not going to be established. Now, looking at the diagram, this simulator gives us an idea of when the connection between the devices are okay. If you look on the, the wire, you realize that we are seeing some red triangles. And that indicates to us that the physical connection between the devices are not properly met. So we are going to attempt to fix that. So I'm going to get rid of the current connection. And I'm going to do a demonstration that will illustrate what is at play here. So we are going to go to the, the connection section which I am currently at it. So if you look down here, you realize we can select network devices. We can select end devices. We can select different kind of media. So the media that was there before was this straight through copper cable. And there are two types of copper cables. You have straight through and you have the crossover. So if I go back to the straight through and I connect it to the ethernet ports, then you realize that the connection fails. And what this is telling us is, even though we have connected it with a cable, the cable that we are using is not the correct cable. So we're not supposed to be using a straight through cable. So I'll remove that. And our other choice then is to use a crossover cable. So let's connect the crossover cable. 
and note the dotted lines that represent the crossover cable. And as I connect the devices, you now realize that we are now seeing a green triangle, which means that the connection has been established properly. So let's go ahead and test that theory. We're going to go back to PC1. And we are going to ping PC2. And this time as we ping PC2, you should realize that we are now getting some response. So we send four packets and we receive replies for the four packets. By the way, just to indicate that you can determine the number of packets you want to send by using the dash n option followed by the number of packets. So in this case, I want to send one packet. I know you realize it pings and it says I sent one packet and I received one packet. There was zero loss. So the backslash n, sorry, the dash n followed by the one is what allows us to specify the number of packets that we are actually sending in a request. By default, it's going to be four packets which are being sent. So we have communicated successfully with the machine, machine being PC2. But remember, before this, we had an incorrect IP address. So now that we are sure that the connection between the machines are accurate, let's go and change the IP address back to what it was and see if we can establish connection with the machine. So if I go to IP configuration, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm on PC1, I need to go to PC2. So PC2, go to IP configuration, and I'm going to change it from 10.3 to 10.2, which was what it was originally. And then we go back to PC1, command line, and then we establish or try to establish communication with, sorry, with the same dot three. So remember, we have now changed it to 10.2, but now we are trying to communicate with 10.3. And if I ping it, even though the connection um, is physically intact, Realize that based on the statistics, we sent one, but it was not received. And that tells us that there is an issue that needs to be resolved. And we know that the issue in this case would now be the IP address. So in summary, there are several things that you need to look at whenever an issue is occurring within a network. It could be occurring at the physical level. So there's something that is wrong with the actual medium or the connection between the devices. It could be ruptured. It could be non-existent. It could be um, not plugged in properly. These are some common things that can occur. So that's the physical level. And we also have the network level where we're talking about the IP addresses they could be configured incorrectly. And if the IP addresses are configured incorrectly, then it means that the devices would not be able to communicate. As mentioned earlier, we are going to dive deep into the model known as the OSI model. And that will illustrate or highlight some of the things that you would have seen being demonstrated in this video.